How's it going, y'all? Titansfan920, and today we're at it with our first in-depth look at some Throne of Eldraine standard decks. Uh, last video, we overviewed six of them that I made from scratch here, and I figured we're going to take a little bit closer look at some of these. We're going to start off with one that I'm pretty excited about, and that is Simic Flash. So starting off in the one-drop slot here, we have a full playset of Spectral Sailor and two ops. Spectral Sailor, you all know the card. It's a 1-1 Flash Flying, pay four mana to draw a card. Um, a very underrated creature because late game is just a mana sink where you can start using your mana to draw cards if you need to. And if you get down to the top deck four, it's actually a one drop creature that you don't mind to see. We also have two of the opt. I know it looks a little bit strange only having two here, but I think with once upon a time, we don't want to have a full play set of it. Um, this allows us to cheat on our mana a little bit. We go down to 22 lands now instead of the original 24 that I had in the last video. But between once upon a time, full play set, and two ops, I think this lets us do that. So in the two drop slot, we start off with a full play set of Quench. Now, this one may seem strange, but I think you need a guaranteed way to make sure that you have little Teferi answer, regardless if you're on the play or the draw, and Quench lets us do that. We've lost out on Syncopate. We don't have Syncopate anymore, so I think Quench is actually the go-to here. And though it may not be as good as Syncopate, it's actually going to do a pretty good job filling in for it, and I think it can really surprise people. We have a full play set of Brindmore Cutthroat. Nothing new here. We all know of this card. 2-1 Flash. Whenever you cast a spell during an opponent's turn, put a 1-1 counter on Brindmore Cutthroat. We've all seen how big this card can get. It can really take over a game and just it forces chump blocks once it's not answered. Another card that's going to be like that and one that I'm really excited about is Wildborn Preserver. Uh, two mana, flash, reach, 2-2. Two, two. Already fine stats on its own. Whenever another non-human creature, which is every creature in the deck, enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay X. If you do, put X 1-1 one, one counters on Brian, or Wildborn Preserver. This thing is going to get big. This thing is going to get bad and really allow some fun lines of play. Uh, say you've got a Frilled Mystic, you've got held up, and they play something that you're not really concerned about countering too much, and that's it. Uh, instead, maybe you flash in a Spectral Sailor, pay the X, you know, equals 3 there with that 4 mana, and you put 3 1-1 one, one, one counters on here, and all of a sudden your 2-mana creature became a 5-5 five, five with Reach. That's pretty, pretty nasty. That's going to make some really fun combat lines there, and I'm excited to see how the card works out for everybody. Um, lastly, in the 2-drop slot here, and this is kind of cheating calling it a 2-drop, but once upon a time, I believe if you're playing a green deck, you've got to have a full playset of these to start off with. Perhaps that's not right, but that's the direction I'm going in here with it. But we all know this card. If you haven't seen it for some reason, if the spell is the first spell you've cast this game, you may cast it without paying your mana cost. Free spells and magic tend to be pretty good. Um, but even even if not, it's two mana. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or a land card, put it to your hand, put the rest in the bottom, any order. Uh, late game, this is a great card I want to see. Early game, is like, it's a great card that I want to see. And I think overall this is a really, really good inclusion for the deck, and it plays well with what we're trying to do here. In the 3-drop slot, we're still running a full playset of Sinister Sabotage. There wasn't any other really good counter spells printed in the set that I wanted to have, so Sinister Sabotage is still the go-to, which is still fine. Surveilling is great, and countering spells spell is great, and that's kind of what we want to do here in this 3-drop slot. We also have Brazen's Borrower. Uh, this also fits in 2-drop, you know. You have Petty Theft, which is the instant. Return target non-land permanent and owner controls to its owner's hand. Now... It kind of sucks that you can't hit your own creatures because unsummoning your Frilled Mystics and countering things was always pretty nice. But still, the addition of having non-land permanents there makes this worth the extra mana, I think. Being able to, you know, you could return a pesky enchantment. A lot of, and, and it's cool because a lot of these enchantments we have now are all based on, say, the green one, you know, and you take care of their big creature. All of a sudden, maybe that cost reduction they would have had before isn't there anymore. Um, and just in general, you play so many counter spells. A lot of times you can bounce something in the hand, hold up counter magic to answer it once they try to play it again. And on the, on the creature side, we have a 3-mana, three 3-1, three Flash Flying. It can only block creatures with flying. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to be trying to block with that thing very often anyways. Uh, so I think the playset is warranted here, and I'm pretty excited to see this card. Lastly, we have the 4-drop slot, and nothing's changed here. This is feel very familiar. We have Frill Mystic playset, and then play playset a Night Pack Ambusher. Ambusher is still your go-to finisher in the game. You want to get this down and just protect it. With, you know, Do everything you can to keep this thing safe. You start going wide, you start making a bunch of wolves, and it makes the deck really, really dangerous and can close out a game pretty quickly. So between Wildborn Preserve and Night Pack Ambusher now, this deck really got a lot more reach than it didn't have before, and I think it can actually close some games out quicker than people would expect. So speaking of the lands now, we are at the, down to 22 lands. Reason being, between the two ops and the four once upon a time, I think we can kind of cheat there a little bit. I've changed the mana base up from the original video. We have a playset of Temple of Mystery now. Better safe than sorry, I would rather just have my mana guaranteed and be double scry and make sure we set those draws up for the future turns. It's pretty good. Um, we also have one Castle Vantress now. Realize the Green Castle didn't really do much of anything in this deck, 
and one Castle of Antris, the opportunity cost to play this is so low anyway, there's there's no reason not to. Um, if anything, I should maybe be playing two of these and take out another island. But for the time being, I'm going to try this as a one of and see how it goes and see if I want more from there. Otherwise, you know, it's pretty simple. Place at a temple, place at a breeding pool, then figure out your basics from there. Not too bad. Finally, we have in the sideboard, um, this is kind of something, it's going to depend on the meta, what a lot of this is, but this is where I'm going to be starting at. We'll start off with two Veil of Summer. Uh, this is a great card against any kind of removal. Make sure your stuff doesn't get countered. We bring this in against some control decks. Aether Gust is a two of. We return any kind of pesky spells or creatures back to their owner's hands. And one of the very few answers we have for shifting Ceratops off the gate. Though now with the Wildborn Preserver, we do have a little bit better of answer. And it's not quite the runaway just beat down than it was before. But obviously we're still playing more of those. Two of Cerulean Drake. I feel like Mono Red, as they it does every standard season when it first starts off, is going to be problematic. Um, I think Torbrand is a monster, monster card, and something like Cerulean Drake can at least help us keep some damage out of this, but boy, it's going to do its duty and see how it goes. Maybe this is something we don't want for the time being. I like it. Two Negate, because what kind of blue control deck or any kind of blue deck doesn't have two Negate, you know? At least two. Uh, one Sorcerer's Spyglass may be wrong, but I think I kind of like this here at the two-drop slot. Just look at their hand, see what they do. Obviously, this doesn't stop the little Teferi and the static ability. But being able to just stop things from entering the battlefield and know what we're playing against helps us set up our counters and draws more for the future game. Two of Mystical Dispute. This one may be, seem a little bit weird, but man, against the control decks or any kind of blue based deck, this becomes a, a super spell pierce in a way. Uh, it reads it's three mana. This card casts two, le two less to cast if it targets a blue spell. Counter target spell unless the controller plays three. So this becomes a one mana counter target spell unless the controller plays three. That's pretty sweet. Uh, this is definitely a good sideboard card. Maybe it should be more than the two of, I don't know, but I definitely want to try at least two of them out and see how that goes. And finally, uh, the boy, Shift and Ceratops, coming in against the mirror matches, coming in against when we need to get some quick damage out there. We've all seen how good this card can be, and I'm looking forward to having him. But that's the list. That's what we've got. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. If you're new, stick around for all the new subs that I've had recently from the last video. Thank you for supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it and like having you all here. Uh, going to be trying to look in depth at some more decks as we go along here. Thursday's the day we finally get to get our hands on this and play, and I'm excited. Uh, so looking forward to it. Hope to see you all for the next video. Take care.